Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 6, Genetic Change. This is video number 6, Somatic versus germline mutations. So in this particular video, we want to distinguish between somatic mutations and germline mutations and their effect on an organism, and in fact, their potential uh, effect on more than just a single individual. So what we've been doing up to this stage is we've been looking at some of the causes of mutation and some of the types or classifications of mutation. Now we're up to the consequence. So one of the first ways that we can look at some consequences is to identify the difference between somatic mutations and germline mutations, to compare and contrast these, and then to evaluate the relative impact of them both on the individual within the generation and potentially future generations. So as I said, we've looked at cause and classification, now we're up to consequence. So one of the first things that we have to do when we start to identify or at least evaluate the consequences of mutations is to look at the types of cell in which the mutation has occurred. And so when we look at the types of cells, we really can find two main types of cells. The first types of cells are the body cells. The body cells we've called somatic cells. So sometimes there are mutations that can occur in body cells. This is typically the case when mutation uh, leads to cancerous development. So exposure to ultraviolet radiation, a type of electromagnetic mutagen, can cause skin cancers or melanomas. So the um, abnormal growth of cells, but those cells are body cells. Those cells are cells in the in the skin or in the underlying tissue. And these particular cells are ones that only affect the individual. However, there is another group of mutation, of types of cells, I guess we would say, in which a mutation can have a more long lasting uh, impact. And that is when mutation occurs during the process of meiosis. Because meiosis is specifically about producing gametes, sperm and eggs. And in this production of gametes, a mutation that can occur, if it occurs in a, in a gamete that is then part of fertilization, can then not only appear in all of the cells of the offspring, but also potentially uh, in any children or, or any lineage that they may have uh, after that. So this can actually have an impact on many, many different generations. So one of the problems that we have with germline mutations is that they are very specific. They are related often to the process of meiosis and whether or not any specific mutations occur during that process of meiosis. And this is what we refer to as germline mutations. So germline mutations, if you think G for germ and G for gamete, this is the way we try and remember that the germline mutations are the ones that occur in the gametes. And this means that any any mutation can be passed on to the offspring and not just passed on to the offspring but because it's occurred in that uh, in that first cell it then can uh, be replicated into all of the cells uh, of the offspring this um, source of you of of uh, variation in a particular species can lead to um, variations upon which natural selection can operate. So remember, when we talk about mutations, we're not simply talking about some um, horrible thing that um, causes the individual to die an early death. These can be variations that can create advantages for the individuals that makes them better suited to the environment and therefore will actually result in an increase in the proportion of those genes uh, in the gene pool in future generations. And so we can get evolutionary shifts as a result of what we might call mutants, which is just this production of um, a mutation during the process of meiosis leading um, to changes that can then be inherited through that process of fertilization. On the other hand, somatic mutations are ones that remain in the body and generally speaking are only going to affect the individual. So this is um, uh, an individual or a single generational type change. It's not one, it's not one that's going to be passed on to the offspring. So we're not gonna have these mutations continuing on through different generations. As I mentioned earlier in this video, some of these types of mutations are the ones that can lead to cancerous growths, but they can also lead to things that are called mosaics, which is um, 
When mutation happens very early in the stages as the cell is dividing, uh, becoming a blastocyst, you get a lot of different cells. Um, think about that process as one cell, which is the fertilized egg or zygote, becoming two, two becoming four, four becoming eight. At that stage, for example, if there is a mutation, then the eight becomes 16, but then a couple of those will carry this, and the 16 becomes 32, a few more cells will be carrying this mutation, and so on. And this can lead to things called mosaics, which are um, some unusual effects that we occasionally see in organisms where certain mutated cells have got to certain places alongside some uh, what we might call normal cells. And you can see in the background of this uh, slide, um, the cat has different colored eyes. And so um, this is one of the things that we can see happening as a consequence of these mosaics or these um, cells where you have a combination of uh, normal cells and mutated cells. As with many of these kind of comparative definitions or, or concepts that we need to deal with, comparison tables are not just a great tool to use in answering questions in your HSC, but they're also a great study tool to help you compare side by side these two important types of mutation, somatics and germline. So some of the keys are around inheritance. Um, somatic mutations are limited to the individual where germline mutations can be passed on to, to multiple generations further on. Usually um, the uh, somatic are localized. So these will just occur in individual tissues where the mutant cells um, have affected that particular type of tissue, whereas in the germline mutations, because it's come from uh, a zygote, every cell can carry that um, mutation. Um, interestingly enough, often the mutation that occurs in uh, somatic cells will not, because of the, their locations usually, will not um, then be uh, carried through into any of the gametes. So they, they uh, maintain clear of these mutations, but of course in germline mutations, if the mutation occurs, then potentially half of the gametes uh, can carry this mutation. And as a result, um, the chances of one of them being fertilized may be quite high. The effects uh, usually for somatic muta mutations are often uh, evident, so we can see the effects of these, whereas germline mutations can be silent, and we don't necessarily know that there are mutations present unless the type of mutation leads to a particular consequence in, say, the production of a polypeptide that's not um, functioning as it would normally. Usually we can link somatic mutations to the process of mitosis, whereas uh, because it's a different process, uh, for the production of gametes, often germline mutations we'd have to link to meiosis. That would be the, the process where the change occurs in comparison to my, mitosis for somatic cells. And it's probably also worth you having a look at a couple of uh, examples of conditions that are often a result of these types of mutations. So this is the first of the uh, little series of videos that we're going to be looking at on some of the consequences of mutations by looking at where they occur, the different parts of the DNA in which they occur, and um, some extrapolation then to the wider gene pool. Thanks for watching.